Well, good morning, everyone. Thomas Montgomery here. We get together with our distribution partners and now our clients most weekday mornings at 8 o'clock Central to talk about strategies, tips, techniques, share success stories, and support each of you. Today, we're going to go back to the basics and just answer the question, what is it that we do? This question is applicable to us on our side of, of the equation, but equally applicable to each of you who are our branch offices. So in a one sentence statement, let's identify what we do, and then we'll proceed with talking about how we do it. But first, what is it that you and I do? We help imperfect and unqualified people become qualified for a guaranteed minimum of $100,000 of funding to start or grow a business through an economic development grant that we've received using legal, ethical, and effective strategies resulting in increased financial literacy and credible three C's, credit collateral capacity. So in, in one sentence, that is what we do. So if someone asks you what you do, I would suggest you might want to make that statement. If you have business cards, you might want to put on the back of your business card that statement. If you're creating marketing pieces, I would include that statement on your marketing pieces because this succinctly in one sentence states what we do. doesn't describe how we do it. I'm going to get to that next, but that's what we do. Who has questions on that one statement? Do you have feedback? So, Art, Andrea, Brenda, Charles, Eric, Jeanette, Lon, Madison, Nicole, Peter, Sharika, Sylvia. We, we, we've got a large number of people on today, which is awesome. Does anyone have any comments or feedback on that one sentence description of what we do? All right. So Timothy, as usual, has got the first question. So do, can we help perfect people? Can we help qualified people? We certainly can they need it less, but but that's right. We do have some people that come to us that are not imperfect and that are not unqualified. So the rest of it's still true. So even if someone does come to us that's perfect and qualified, then we still guarantee them a minimum of 100000 to start and grow a business through the grant using legal. So all the rest is the same. But you're right. You, you'll run into, on occasion, perfect people and qualified people that really don't need any assistance in, in their three C's. They just need help getting the funding. So that can happen. I, I would say that's probably one out of 10 to one out of 20 clients that you'll see. Any other comments or questions on that one sentence statement? So is it our mission statement? Well, not specifically, but if it, is, it is a really nice, accurate descriptor of what you and I do together. But that enough is not enough. We need to describe how, because that almost sounds, well, it's a little bit vague, but also also could be interpreted as too good to be true. How in the world are you gonna guarantee anyone 100,000? That must be a scam. Well, it's not a scam. So let's dig in to how that happens because part of what we talk about is financial literacy. You know a lot of things, most likely, that many people don't know. And so when people don't know information, they, they may pull from their experiences and, and exposures and make wrong inferences. So let's go ahead and talk about what we do, you and I, what we do to help the three C's become credible so people become qualified for a guaranteed minimum of 100000 to start a grow business. Okay. So this isn't new information, right? We haven't changed what we do. We help people with the three C's. We're just going to reiterate today how we do it. So what we know is that if you apply for funding, the lender is going to look at your credit report. Why would they do that? What? That's unfair. Why should a lender look at my credit report? That, that's just, that's not necessary. Well, it's a reflection of what kind of borrower we were in the past. Did we pay our bills as we promised to pay? 
have we managed access to large amounts of credit before? It, it's our history, right? And so can we change our history? Absolutely. And I'll get to that in a moment. But it makes perfect sense. We may not like it. We may not want it. But of course, lenders are going to typically, in most cases, look at our credit report. So they're determining were we an honest borrower or did we not pay as promised? Because no one knows what's going to happen in the future. But the best predictor of the future is the past, especially the recent past. So how is it that they would assess our credit? You know, may, maybe we don't like that they do that, but how do they do that? Well, they typically look at personal and or business credit reports. So it's, it's numerical, it's quantifiable. So what is it that you and I do to help people that are imperfect or unqualified in regards to their credit? Well, we're going to change their past and improve the projected future, legally and ethically. How does that happen? Well, we have a program called Credit Suite, which is legal in terms of blocking applicable negative information. So the negative comes off, and then we help them add new stronger credit, new, pro, new primary trade lines, and we call that our credit boost. So that is a recipe. It's an irrefutable recipe for better credit. No one can refute that. If you take negative off and add positive on, subject to the, the baseline criteria of the profile, we'll get better credit. So that is how you and I help people with the first of the three C's. So how much does a credit sweep cost? It's free, right? It's built in. We provide that service for free. We're, we're, we're looking at the baseline credit profile through the soft poll, which you will obtain as a branch once the client has signed up. We'll look at that and we'll determine what needs to be done, if anything, to help them become perfect or less imperfect and move from being unqualified to qualified. Because our goal is to get them a minimum of 100000 to start a grow a business. But we must qualify. It's not too good to be true. If anything's a scam, it's when people think, oh, I don't have to qualify for funding. I can just want it. I can just need it. That's not the way underwriting works. It doesn't matter how bad you want it or how bad you need it. It matters do you qualify. That's what you and I do. Legally, ethically, effectively, honorably, we help people become qualified for funding. Any questions on the first C, of how you and I accomplish this statement. So we're, oh, we've only addressed the first seed, credit. Any questions there? Now, the devil's in the details, of course. We need to get the client enrolled. We need to do the soft pull. We need to look at their profile. It's not a standardized approach. It's not a one-size-fits-all. We need to look at the client's profile and determine what needs to be done. And we'll do that together. You'll enjoy it. All right, so let's move on. So now we, we figured out one third of what you and I do that makes this possible. Not too good to be true, not a misrepresentation. Heaven knows it's not a scam, legal, effective, proven. Let's move on to the next C and that's collateral. So what else do we do to help people become credible with their three C's to move from them from being imperfect and unqualified to becoming qualified? for a minimum of 100,000. We're gonna help them assess and improve their collateral. Doesn't matter what you think. It doesn't matter if you don't like it. It doesn't matter if I don't like it. We're working within the rules. We're staying compliant. We understand what lenders look for. They look at the three C's. We've covered the first. Now we're on the second, collateral. So let's read on. Your assets, your assets are taken into account when calculating your borrowing capacity by the lender. Greater collateral empowers your borrowing potential and thus makes lenders confident when lending you money. So collateral matters. We often will have clients that come to us and they are imperfect and unqualified, but don't even know it. Because maybe, maybe there are A plus here. Maybe their credit is A plus. So they think that's all that it takes. That's why you and I have to become financial literacy 
professors to help people understand it's not now, now there's some sources of capital that only will look at one C that's true. And so if someone has just great credit, and nothing else, well, we can get them some initial funding. But if we're trying to go after large amounts of business funding, it's the three C's that matter. And the second of the three C's is collateral. Well, how is that measured? Very, very objectively, just like these credit scores, right? These aren't something that we make up and it's like, oh, wink, wink, it's good or wink, wink, it's not good. No, it's, it's numbers on paper. It's data. Same with collateral. It's not emotional. It is factual. So we can look at the balance sheet of the business, which reflects assets and liabilities, and or we can look at the personal financial statement, often referred to as the PFS, of the business owner or owners. We just had a training, 50-minute training, almost an hour long, we trained on this topic yesterday. So what happens if someone is weak in collateral? What if they're imperfect or unqualified? Does that mean that they can't get 100000 to start or grow a business? Absolutely not. We help them. That, that's the purpose of our program. And in fact, through the credit and funding program, that solution that you and I take to the marketplace, we provide all clients, not some, not those that just ask for it, even if they don't need it. We provide all, all clients free collateral. So they can put that either on their balance sheet or their personal financial statement so they have collateral. Now, what's that about? How, how do you do that? that? That sounds like a scam. Of course, it's not a scam. You can transfer assets, right? You could sell me your house or your car or your business. I could sell you my car, my home or my business. But there's other types of assets. There's bulldozers. There's forklifts. There's... there's uh, Welding machines, right? There's all different types of assets. Well, what we're dealing with are accounts receivables, one of the most common types of assets in business. So we literally transfer the ownership, transfer the title of accounts receivables to every client that enrolls in the credit and funding program to improve their collateral. Now, we're going to talk in a moment about other benefits of that collateral, but for now, uh, we, we have addressed two of the three C's. We now understand what it is, how it's measured, and then specifically the resource or the programming that you and I have to help people with that. Now, what can be confused, and we want to avoid confusion or, or dissatisfaction, is we don't give people a billion dollars of accounts receivable. So we're going to provide everyone with free collateral. We do. It's part of the, the proposition, and, and we do that. And, and you need to hold us accountable to doing that. But does that mean that that's all the collateral that they would need for their capital raise? It might be. It might not be. Right? I don't know. We, we, we're going to have to, to get data from the client to determine if what they bring to the table plus what we give them for free, is that enough? If so, excellent. If not, we have one of two choices either reduce the initial capital raise, meaning the, the first tranche, down to the amount of collateral that they have, or add more collateral to meet the amount of funding that they're pursuing. So we can pivot one way or the other, and we'll work with you on your clients. And so you and they decide. It doesn't matter to us, but there has to be equilibrium, right? Just think about it. if you wanted to go buy a new million dollar house, well, you wanted to go buy a new house, and the seller is selling it to you for a million dollars, and you love that house, it's the house of your dreams. But you get it appraised, and it's worth $100,000. That's a collateral shortfall. So do you think any mortgage lender in the world is going to loan you a million dollars for a house that's worth 100000 No, you have a collateral shortfall. So you, you've got to either bring the, the shortfall to the table, or we're going to have to we have to we have to change a variable. So here in our world, if we have a collateral shortfall, even after we provide the free collateral, we can either reduce the initial, the first tranche, the first round of funding to match the collateral they have, or add even more collateral. Make sense? 
All right, so then we get to the last C, which is capacity, sometimes referred to as cash flow. Let's read what it says. The capacity to repay the loan is also considered by the lender when they decide to set a loan amount for you. In this, your income, as well as your existing obligations and your proposed loan amounts are taken into account to determine how much debt you can handle. If your income is high enough to accommodate the existing obligation and the one that you're trying to take on, your capacity is seen good. So in other words, can you afford to pay the loan back? Now, one of the great tools that you and I have since August 1st is that the SBA has changed how they underwrite this. And now they allow you and I as technical advisors to help our clients to create financial projections to say, well, we may not be able to afford it now, but you give us that funding and then we'll be able to afford it. So that's a significant change to your and my benefit, to client's benefit that just changed August 1st. It wasn't that way so much before. In the past, it was much more about historical financials. Now you and I have the wonderful opportunity that we can show financial projections. Well, where would find where where would financial projections come from? You know, how would we show or, or, or justify that there's more money that's going to come in? Well, the business grows, it's more profitable. And also, of course, we can show that we're going to liquidate our accounts receivable. So how is it measured? Past business and personal income plus what I just mentioned, future projections. How is it that you and I, through the credit and funding program, help people with this? Well, we assist all clients with increased capacity, and that really happens a couple ways, one of which is making sure that they have the documentation in order to qualify. And then secondly, as I just referenced, we can help them liquidate the receivables from here to add more cash flow. So let's hit the summary, and then we'll open it up for Q&A. So the grant subsidized credit and funding program can assist anyone with becoming qualified through the three C's above for a minimum of $100,000 capital raise to start or grow a business. It's fine if they want more than $100,000. Many of, maybe most of, but, but at least many of our clients want, they desire more than $100,000, and that's fine. We just need to make sure that we document that they're qualified for it. How do we do that? We make sure that their credit, their collateral, and their capacity shows that they qualify for that larger amount. And we're very good at that, so that's not a problem. It's just the grant we applied for and received requires us to guarantee a minimum of 100000 but it's not a maximum. We can work with people for more. There's obviously no risk to the participant. Everything's in writing. We provide the client a written guarantee. We are focused on 100% client satisfaction. And in most cases, they're going to see funding in a month or less. As many of you know, we have a great referral program. So you can help improve the financial literacy of others and help get paid to facilitate their capital raise. It's not get rich quick, may not even be life changing for a lot of you. A lot of you are very successful already. But on average, you're looking at generating about $12,000 of gross income for each client that you refer into the system. Our typical branch, and some of you are doing more or less, you know your numbers, but our typical branch is doing one a day. And so just do the math. I mean, if, if you could have a side gig where you could make an extra $12,000 a day, 30 days in the month, it's a good side gig. You know, it's, it's probably not going to replace your primary income, may not change your lifestyle, but it's, it's a good, solid, honorable way to supplement your income. And that's all we're professing it to be. It's not a get rich quick scheme. And there's work involved, right? You have to generate the client. Now we can provide you leads, but you need to get the client under contract. You're the point of interface. And we just taught you yesterday, you need to do the PFS, the personal financial statement. It's not a scam. It's not too good to be true, right? You're probably going to spend about an hour onboarding each client. I mean, let's let's just be honest with each other. So up front, you're getting $2,000 the day that the client enrolls, and we split that 
So you've netted a thousand dollars, but you're probably going to spend an hour with them. So you can do the math. If your time is worth more than a thousand an hour, this is a horrible decision. You would not want to be one of our referral partners. If you can go do something else and make more than a thousand dollars an hour, you should end this Zoom and go make a thousand an hour doing something else. And, and, and I'm not being sarcastic. I know that many of you have that skill set and that ability. But if you like the model, you want to help people, and a thousand an hour is enough to justify you using your time, then this is a gold mine. It's a literal gold mine. And of course, our contact us information hasn't changed. So let me shrink this down and we want to open it up for questions. So this is not new information. We're just obviously reiterating what it is that we do and how we do it. Who has questions, comments, concerns? I was talking to Peter. Peter, you're on the line. Peter, uh, you just signed up your first client. Awesome job. He's a new branch. Peter, what do you take of this? What, what's your feedback? Sylvia, you're another relatively new branch. I don't think you signed your first client yet, but what do you make of, of this statement? Miss Dash, you've enrolled seven or eight clients already. Uh, you're the one that I believe has 73 more coming this week. What, what, what's your opinion of what we do, Miss Dash, and how we do it? Looking for feedback from you all, whether you be new, or experienced, whether you're a high producer or, or, an, or a newbie. Take Art. I was just talking to Art this morning. Art, I think you have, and again, my memory is not that great, uh, one or two clients uh, in, in the mix, which is great. Art, is, is, is this what you feel like you're doing when you're working with clients, or is there a disconnect, right? Because if there's a disconnect, we need to address it, because this is what our model was designed to do. Brenda, you're, you're a machine. You, you probably have, if I were to guess, you probably have 250 prospects in your funnel. So Brenda, what do you make of this? Is, is this on par with, with what you think that you do and what we do? Or is there some disconnect? Because invariably, you're going to run into critics. You're going to run into people that say, oh, no, no, it's not real. You don't do that. Well, be, be specific. Ask them. If you run into a critic, ask them, well, what is it that you think that we don't do, that we say that we do do, and we put it in writing, right? Because if you're running a scam or something that, that's illegitimate, you probably wouldn't put it in writing for the world to read, right? That would be illogical, right? If I'm selling fentanyl down in the Walmart parking lot, I'm not doing written terms and conditions with my, with my uh, users, right? So, if someone is critical, it's okay. It's probably because they don't know. They don't understand. They lack financial literacy. That's a teaching moment. That's not an insult. Don't be offended by it. And then from that, they can either be willing to listen and learn or not. But we will do 100% of what we promise to do. We'll work with you and we'll deliver what we promise to do. Now, if, if the client has expectations that's above and beyond that, we can try to meet those, but we can't guarantee them. Let's say you have a client that says, okay, I need a billion dollars. Can you get it? What I'd say is, well, let's enroll. Let's find out. I mean, we can give you the first hundred thousand for sure. We won't waste your time, but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll work with you. We'll build a plan to get a billion dollars. But as you would know, to, to get a billion dollars, you're going to have to have the credit, the collateral and the capacity. So we'll assess where you're at and figure out if, if you qualify, and if not, help you get there. So, so that's the same answer for everyone. Some of you get so caught up in, in the deal, you know, the, the, what the person wants the money for or when they need it. None of that matters up front. They need to enroll. They need to pay. You need to get the soft pull completed, and then you need to complete the PFS. And we did a detailed training yesterday, almost an hour long on how to do the personal financial statement. We ask you to do one on yourself as a practice and then do one on a friend or a family member. So after you've done one on yourself and one on a friend or a family member, if you're still getting hung up, th then let us know and we can further help you. But but some of this is empowerment. So it requires your, your engagement. So 
If you're not confident about doing the PFS that we trained on yesterday, go back and watch the training. Do one on yourself. Do one on a friend or family member. In other words, two practice ones. And then at that point, if you're not comfortable, you're not competent, you're not confident, then, then let us know. But you need to do that much. You need to watch the training video and you could have it up plain, right? You could have it on your screen and you could have your PFS printed out in front of you and you pause and you write in your number and you hit play and you pause. But, but it, as a branch, you need to be competent to do the PFS. And I believe that any of you, I'm confident, and all of you are going to be able to do that. But you need to watch the training from yesterday. Do one on yourself. Do one more practice when interfacing with another person before you go to your clients. So that's my request to you. All right, so back to the rest of you. Who has questions on what we do and how we do it? Anyone have questions on how we do it? Oh, yes, uh, uh, Sylvia mentioned, I did send out the four-minute kind of generic video to everyone yesterday if you wanted to incorporate that into your outreach. It, it's a little bit financial literacy, but it's primarily just a four-minute overview of what the credit and funding program is. It just doesn't have any reference to us. Now, I sent it to you in a YouTube format. If you want it in a raw video in an MP4 file, I believe, correct, just email us and we can send it to you in the MP4 file format so you can... Um, do with it something different if you desire. But yes, yeah, uh, you're welcome, Sylvia. I did send that out to everyone yesterday, a four minute overview video that you could incorporate into your, your prospect outreach. But back to this. So this is what we do. This is how we do it. And then the summary, who has questions on who we are, what we do, how we do it because it's pretty straightforward, but you just have to be thick skinned. You're going to run into critics. You will definitely run into critics. And when you run into critics, what you want to do is, is, of course, treat them with love and respect and ask them, okay, well, what is your concern? What specifically is your concern? And if they challenge the model, then just very respectfully ask them, okay, well, what part of the three C's do you think is a farce? Do you think that lenders don't care about credit? Do you think that lenders don't care about collateral? Do you think that lenders don't care about capacity? Oh, no, 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 oh, that's fine. Okay, great, great. Do you think that the way that they measure it is the way that we've stated? Well, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Okay, so do you think that it's, it's possible to improve credit using these strategies? It certainly is. Do you think that we can improve collateral by adding assets to the, the financials? Oh, yeah, 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 we can. Do you believe that we can improve capacity through documentation and liquidation of receivables? Well, sure. So typically when you run into adversaries or, or critics, it's either they have some other agenda or they don't understand. But a lot of people that don't know, they don't know that they don't know. And so if you're interfacing with someone that is of below average intelligence and unwilling to learn new things, you'll never win an argument. It doesn't, they say it's hard to debate with a smart person, but it's impossible to debate with a dumb person. Because if, if a person is not able to assimilate new information and learn and, and restructure their perspective, you'll never win. So I would say if you run into someone that, that's just not a good candidate, move on, right? They can go find some other way to go out and find someone that's going to provide them a guaranteed $100,000 of funding. They can find someone else that's going to help them with their credit for free. They can go find someone else that's going to give them collateral for free. They can go find someone else that's going to help them improve their capacity for free. Right. Let them go find another service if, if they're just not willing to participate. All right. With that being said, thank you all for your time. Obviously, you know how to reach us and uh, we will see you back tomorrow morning. Same time, same place. Have a good day. Bye.